this great gift of tariqa that is a way towards these oceans of reality. And somebody had asked in an email for an understanding of who, who's in charge of insan. And who's making the choices that people are making? And one way of analogies to, to understand the realities is that there's one chair, <coughs> but there's three people trying to sit on it. This chair is the chair of authority, the heart. And the heart that controls the mind and, and all its realities, we can imagine it to be a chair. Shaitan wants that chair and if he sits on it he'll control the faculties of insan, he'll control the person, their thoughts, their wants, their desires. And the nafs wants to sit on that chair and govern that individual. And the most authorized one to sit on the chair is the soul. And the soul wants to sit on the chair to implement Allah's kingdom so that he comes from Divinely inspiration to sit upon the chair of authority and govern insan by means and the way of what the heavens has asked of them. And our life is understanding that struggle. Means the people of Nafsa Amara, the one whom completely gave themselves to shaitan, then they must know that shaitan is sitting upon, Satan is sitting upon their chair. And as he sits upon it, he implements his satanic desire and everything that's against the heavens and everything that's wrong, everything that's bad and we'll begin to dress that insan and that personality from his satanic understandings and from his satanic desires. The nafs which comes from a… As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A reality of Jahannam and is a fiery nature, it wants to sit upon the chair and implement wickedness and evilness, it lends itself to the satanic desire. So we described many times before, there's no shariq with Allah because there's no possibility of that happening. So anybody rightly minded understands there's no partnership with Allah and there's no way to achieve a partnership or to think of having a partnership. The nas shariq in its reality is the one whom allows their nafs to become partnered with shaitan. And they fight for the chair of authority. So means the satanic desire, the nafs and the soul are completely away from the chair. It's so strong and it has no belief in the heavens and it's amara, every lower bad desire. And if it left to become stronger and stronger upon that chair, 
it become horrific in this world where you see all of these horrific actions where you say, a human couldn't do that, no a human can't because the humanity has left, there's no human sitting on that chair. They have literally given themselves to these jinn and shayateen that completely sit upon their chair of authority, govern them and even give them what they want to eat, what they want to do. So we see ourselves like a chair. And it controls the ears, the eyes, the hands, everything about insan. The one whom's struggling is then a nafs and his ego sits upon the chair. But the danger is that the ego if not under discipline it keeps becoming a partner with shaitan in which the shaitan is clever and approaches the nafs and says, why don't we be partners where you can sit on the chair and I will sit on the chair, we will share this chair of authority. And in their shariq and in their partnership they be govern, they begin to govern that person by their satanic desire and nafsani desire. In which the moment the shaitan sits the very bad inclination and when the shaitan gets up the nafs sits and makes its own nafsani and everything, <coughs> what's the word for ananiya, everything about I, I am, I did, I this, I that. And you can hear these people when they talk. Everything is I, they address everything, you know I did this, I went here, I did this, I met this, I did this, I did that, I did this. They have ananiya, pharaonic nafs that directs everything to itself and that I-ness. And that's why the tariqah comes and talks and says that they and we talk in multiple not in singular, never as an I because the, the danger of I-ness is the danger of pharaoh because it becomes a one eye not multiple eye and the eyeness it is directing itself to its egoistic and ego, egoistic desire. So in reality the two of them are fighting, becoming partners on how often they can sit on the chair. And hence when people are not giving power to their soul, not doing spiritual practices, who's making the choices? Nafs and shaitan because they are clearly partners on the chair and every lower desire, bad desire, bad action they make it and they even have audacity to blame God, oh nothing open for me so no, I don't have to do good, I don't have to do this because satanic and crazy thought process. But we have to understand the one making the choice is the nafs and shaitan on this one chair. Allah when He wants to guide the servant, He begins to guide them to put a power upon their soul. They have an inner calling towards realities. If Allah doesn't begin to push that light and energy onto the soul they can never come to guidance, never. It's not anyone's cleverness, that's why Allah for salah has us reciting that, hay ala salah, hay ala falah, come to prayer, come to success and the believer's response is, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi alim azeem, that there is no Hawla, no help and no power except in Allah Means that when we sit and make contemplation Prophet gave for us that say that because the deep reality is that you have no ability to pray. You have no ability to come to any type of Divinely success without the might and majesty of Allah Izzati wa jalalihi by his might and his majesty. And that's why Allah has a saying that when the prayer in the azan is going off, repeat to yourself, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi alim 
When you can't complete your ibadah and you can't compete or complete your worshipness, you're dying and you're being defeated. Not to be content with that means you are slowly being slaughtered and the power against that is the zikr of La hawla wa la quwwata illa bil nahi alayhim adheem. Every day hundred times minimum when you find that your energy, your hawla and quwwa that you feel there's no help reaching to you to get to your worshipness and that you're not reaching a quwwa, a power. That's why again the meditation, tafakkur and contemplation. If you feel that's not reaching to you, you have to recite and keep reciting. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah and make your connection asking Allah that, please send your help and send your power for without that I cannot pray, I cannot achieve any goodness. And that's a, a might and a majesty and a light that comes to the soul. And it comes to the soul and slaps shaitan in the head and slaps the nafs in the head, get off the chair. And the two of them are frightened by that power. That's why this world is against Islam. The mere azan puts terror in the heart of those two. When they hear the azan, they know that these servants and these souls are potentially reaching to a power. And if that power should reach that third individual, he smacks them off the chair and he hits them off the chair. And as soon as he sit upon that chair, he will instruct the body according to Allah's will and desire that now pray to your Lord, wash before you pray. The one whom does not pray, he's not clever, is shaitan is sitting on his head and that's nothing to be proud of. Like a donkey that reached to nothing, like a farm animal that lost out into the field. That we have to visualize the reality, visualize these things. That how can I let shaitan sit upon my chair? How can I let my nafs sit upon my chair and humiliate my soul to be nothing? Means then their zikrs, their practices is a means of power. So imagine that when that soul becomes empowered, how much shaitan is fearful of that? We said before the hadith of Prophet is the one whom reaches a reality and rijal and manhood is like the strength of a thousand men, thousand men. So what happens to those two other partners if the one sitting on that chair is like a thousand men? Means they're defeated, they're brought down, continuously brought down. Every practice they do burns those two, every zikr they recite burns the two and they become like dogs at the feet of the soul, under each of his feet. And every zikr they do one dog is burning and the nafs the other dog is burning. And that's what Allah wanted for us. Not when the beast is on the chair and that we're like a dog under their feet. The concept of rijal and the way of following the holy companions, following the Ahlul Bayt so that one day we could truly follow the way of Sayyidina Muhammad what distinguished Prophet from all Prophets. Is the might and majesty that Allah Azzati wa Jalalihi dressed the authority of Prophet and the extent in which his might and power put his shaitan under his feet, his nafs under his feet like no other Prophet of Allah 
And as a result his eternal destiny and destination is the sultanat. As a result of that power he sits on the seat of authority for all of creation representing Allah Throughout the heavens and throughout the physical world wherever creation is creation its king and its authority what Allah refers to Sultanan Nasir that has the gate of truth must be entered through the gate of truth and your exit must be through the maqasidi the gate of truth entering in and exiting from truthfulness and we describe truthfulness means be loyal to your love. As a result they're able to enter into the presence of Sultan Nasir. The Sultan where other people want to say it's a this, it's a that and Mawlana Shaykh will get very angry that you know Arabic and it means Sultan is Sultan. Sultan and Nasir is a title which Allah gave to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad He is the Sultan And as a result his nation inherits from that reality. And that's why Prophet is describing the one whom leaves his salah is leaving his Islam. When he leaves his salah he's given his chair of authority and walked away from his chair and he's a dog under the feet of shaitan and his nafs. How he then can say he has anything to do with Islam? And that's the danger. People think it's something, I pray to God in, in a way that I like it, they're rubbish. You're, you're the dog of shaitan and nothing more. It's not an acceptable position in rijal and maturity whether for men or for women to be under the feet of shayateen and under the feet of the nafs and everything that is 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 inspired for us and what Allah is giving to us and says, this chair I gave, you are my most noble creation and I've given most gifts, most amazing realities. Through your noble heart you can reach my Divinely Presence. How dare you walk away from that chair and let shaitan to sit upon it? and mark himself like a ridiculous clown, make you to do all sorts of horrific things. Then we understand why Allah is angered that I gave you an immense power, an immense gift that I, the trust I gave to you all of creation would have wanted that. You accepted it and you're jahulan and you're ignorant of it. Means the trust from Allah wa lakal karam of Bani Adam is that I have given to you an immense authority that you can inherit. You said yes in the world of souls and all of creation was frightened by that trust. Because they knew that they could not hold or contain that authority but mankind said yes to Allah that we will take it. And Islam is the only way to achieve that authority and that authority is based on the way that Allah wants them to pray. The way that Allah wants them to make remembrance. Everything that Prophet brought is the king. All others were of a lesser reality. When the king comes every agent before that means nothing. Every representation before that means nothing. That's why the Isra'i wal Miraj is that Allah showing all the Prophets and Messengers of Allah Whatever you think your title is, 
in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad go to the back of the line and that Sayyidina Muhammad leads the prayer to represent all nations into the presence of Allah And at the end of the salah in tahiyyat they have to give their shahada to Sayyidina Muhammad Means all of these realities teach us the immensity, the immensity of that seat. It's not for somebody to give the seat up, their life is to fight and to struggle for that seat of authority. When we understand the importance of that seat, I must be seated on that chair and not one of three. One of three becomes thumma amanu, thumma kafaru that one day they believe, one day they disbelieve. Because like musical chairs when you were children they have one chair left and three people are going around and sharing the chair. This is not acceptable by Allah either. That one day you sit you do good, as soon as they want the shaitan throws you off and the other two are now playing on the chair. When we understand what they want from us is your whole desires that, my Lord give me a strength and a power in which I sit on the chair of authority and that you put shaitan under my feet and you put my nafs under my feet and that led me to sit upon that chair. And at some point when the madad the ja'a nasrullahi wal fat. رَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يُدْقُلُونَ فِي الدِّينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا or إِنَّ فَتَانَكَ فَتَانْ مُبِينًا That when Allah grant a, a true victory and a true opening means that a, a madad and support eventually dresses upon the servant in which so much might and majesty from all the energies and the madad of all that surrounding upon that servant that those two beings are brought down and as a result when that one sits upon that chair with their soul they are inspired by the heavens. They hear through the heavens and this is Hadith al-Qudsi. They're not a people who only do fard. Why the Hadith says that they did their fard? No, they did voluntary worshipness. Well because fad meant nothing. When you do that which is mandatory and you think you're special because of it, this means nothing. Mandatory was mandatory, it was not a choice. You know when, when something is mandatory you don't have a choice not to do it. So means of course they have to have met the mandatory otherwise they're not even a category in this hadith. And those who did their mandatory now they're extraordinary worshipness means they do everything now from love. They did the mandatory and everything they do now is an expression of love for the Divine, the love for Sayyidina Muhammad and as a result of that love, that hadith is describing the inhabitants of that chair. Because in reality the Divinely face is a throne. So face and throne is the same, face and chair because a, a glorified chair is a throne, has what? Has four legs. Two in the front, two in the back, has two armrests, and then the seat in which you sit upon it. That's seven points one, two, three, four, five, six, and the, the tongue of the chair, the seat of the chair, seven. That represents the face of Allah face of the Divinely Presence because Allah has no face, the face of authority. So the throne 
and Ayatul Kursi and I and the, the realities of the Kursi and the throne and the, the position of authority is signified by a chair. So this is a small chair from the greater chair in which the faculties of the one whom sits upon that, the real inhabitant, not the satanic one and Lord of the Rings was the, the, the false king in which shaitan had come upon that king and put him like in cobwebs and then he was like a demon standing next to a king who was asleep in cobwebs and talking, talking. And when they came into the presence they smacked him and said, get out of here we're not talking to you, we're talking to the king that he has to wake up. Shaitan is not somebody that Allah pays attention to even if he steals the chair. He's not the inhabitant of that chair, he's not the, right, the rightful owner of that chair. But when the soul takes its rightful position and istiqam and, and is firm on its belief, sit upon that chair, that holy hadith begins to open, hadith al-Qudsi for them. In which Allah is so pleased with that soul that achieved that reality and that authority. And as a result of that reality what happens is that I become the hearing in which you hear. I become the seeing in which you see. I become the, the breath in which you breathe, I become the hands in which you touch, the feet in which you move, the tongue in which you speak. And so much so that you become Rabbaniyoon means that you're of a lordly, lawfully nature and merely kun fayakun because the will of that servant matches the will of Allah matches the will of Sayyidina Muhammad that is ati Allah, ati Rasul, ulul amri minkum. The ulul am they obeyed Allah they obey Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah then says then they are to be obeyed and as a result they are dressed from the ears, dressed from the eyes, dressed from the breath, dressed from their hands, their hands sit on an authority. They're dressed with their qadam and their feet, their path and their movement is based upon the soul and what the heaven has required from them. As a result the seat of authority is their tongue and that their tongue is authorized tongue and it has a power, has a light and has an energy and has the power of isharat and guidance and what their tongue says is the will of the heavens and their tongue can move the earth left and they can move the earth right because it comes as authorized realities from the Divinely Presence. So it means there's all the meditation, all the zikrs, all the practices are for what? Why to make the tafakkur? Why to do the zikrs? Why to do your awrad? Why to make your, your, your daily connection? You get your soul off the floor. The two hoodlums that are sitting on your chair is to get up, do your practices, do your zikrs, do all of the connection. It's time for the soul to get its empowerment, its energies, its rights and then throw them off so that the rightful owner of that chair of authority can sit upon that reality and take the dress in which Allah has destined for that servant. Subhana rabbi wa rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago. Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people 
and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.